All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once in a lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, not the first, certainly not the last conversion story to Islam. Today, we're going to react to a Scottish teenager who converted to Islam and his life has been changed forever. Before we start the video, guys, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And with no further ado, let's have a look. Good evening, Muslim convert stories. My name is Matthew. I go by the name Lord Bear on YouTube. This is going to be a brief overview of why I chose Islam, how I came to that decision, how I'm getting on now. I had my Shahada two or three weeks ago now. I want to brief, brief this with, sorry, that there's no way I'm going to get through every single reason as to why I chose Islam, because it's kind of been a lifelong calling that I've had. I've been documenting my journey on my YouTube channel, which is already getting attacked by YouTube. A better way to describe YouTube would be The Matrix. My videos have started to blow up to a degree. A few of them have went semi-viral. My Shahada has nearly 100,000 views. Like I said, there's no way I can get through everything that I want to get through in this video because it's only about 10 to 15 minutes long. So if you want the rest of my reasons, I'm doing an eight part series as to why I chose Islam. It's going to be over on my YouTube. I'm sure the, the gents behind Muslim Reverse will put the links in the description. So let's get going. I'm going to link his channel as well. Brothers and sisters. If I had two reasons in a brief video as to why I chose Islam, it would be faith and law. I'm a young guy. I'm 21 years old. I live in Scotland in the United Kingdom. And the typical life path for people my age, and it has been this way for the past few generations, is one of hedonism, it's one of degeneracy, and it's a a lawless life that we're fed, where it's have no love for your brothers, have no love for your sisters, concern yourself with only what you want in the form of your own desires, don't put your morality in what is right over your... It is very interesting listening to this young man, because when he speaks, it reminds us, of course, of people like Andrew Tate, for example. So this whole move on YouTube truly had an effect on the younger generation. <laughs> Satisfy yourself and don't really care about anyone else. Since I was young, you've been, we've been fed the idea of atheism. And atheism is something that has not been backed up by any proof through scientific method. No. I mentioned this on my other channel, on my channel, sorry, that there is the scientific method, which is you have a, an idea, you test it, you change a variable, exactly. and then you try to disprove it. And if you can't disprove it, you then have a law. No, you cannot disprove it because atheism is, quote-unquote, a negation. It is a negative claim. It's not a positive claim. So atheism does not claim there is a God, but they claim there is no God, or rather there is an absence of belief in God. And therefore, you cannot even conduct a scientific study on that. There is it's a, an easy a way out. There is a term called the science, and the science is a trademark patent, and that's how they can funnel you with any form of propaganda. When you hear a term called the science, it's not scientific method, it is a <laughs> trademark 
Or when they tell you that you are a monkey that comes from nothing. Yeah, exactly. If you look back into the past few years, you saw what has happened. Science told us objectively what to do and everybody followed along. Everybody accepted this science as God ultimately. But this is absolutely not what science is about. As he said correctly here, science, the scientific method, is about finding out what is true. However, the mainstream media has a monopoly on science and by that they have a monopoly on truth. In the dirt from an explosion 15 billion years ago and that's how an eyeball has formed over billions of years of mutation yeah. and that's how you get a child's giggle. Mm. I don't think so, I'm not signing off on that. There is no, when you make a claim, you have to back up the claim. The onus of proof is on he who makes the claim. If you're going to come to me and tell me that I'm a monkey that comes from nothing and spinning around on a ball in infinite blackness with no purpose, no no reason to be here, no higher power at all, and I should just indulge myself and, and get what I can. You have to prove that. I don't have to disprove it. The claim is on... He, the, the onus of proof is on he who makes the claim. So I believe this idea that we are mutated monkeys that have fornicated <laughs> for so long, that we have planes in the sky, an internet connection, poems written, and the giggling innocence of a child when he is born the reason that i believe we're told we are these um mutated monkeys is because it brings in moral subjectivity yep i noticed around me and i don't want to say i'm different than anybody else i don't want to make that claim but there's a lot there's lots of things i'm going to touch on as, as we go along i would actually say credit where credit is due man with 21 years old you're definitely different than most other people in your age when i was 21 years old i was totally immersed within hedonism chasing one girl after the other i didn't have such reflections whatsoever so therefore i would say that you are most definitely a bit different than the others there's lots of things i've For noticed sure. as a young man that i find completely disgusting haram things that no one around me seems to care about yep. and i don't know if i have a deeper conscience than ever than the people around me and that's why i reverted and no sure. one else has yep. but i think the problems with the modern day world i think the way they bring it here it is very important to say especially as a muslim thank god alhamdulillah because yes you definitely have a different perception and as the quran says allah guides who he wills so allah saw something within you and he chose you to be guided so therefore we have to thank god and the rest around you you're correct again they're not guided this idea this lie every cookie has a baker this lie that we come from <laughs> nothing and there is no higher power because if you convince people that they are just space monkeys who have no reason to be here, you will then, you then bring in moral subjectivity. You then yep. bring in this, uh, this nihilistic, depressive existence where there is no reason to do anything. What you also do with that is you take, you take a brother who you would have fought for and learned from and created a great life with. You would have taken a sister who you would have protected and you would have cared for, you would have had a wife who you would have created a, a beautiful family with. But when you bring in this atheism idea, that brother who, you could, who, who could have been great service to you, who you could have honored for your life, he now becomes competition. The sister that you could have taken care of, you no longer care now because everything is over-sexualized and this idea that you... Do you see what I mean? I'm having of course. a hard time articulating it. No, yet again, I think you articulate this very well. Subjectivism, this is really what it boils down to. People do not believe in an objective standard. Within religion, especially Islam, of course, we have an objective standard. This objective standard is God. And whatever God decreed for us, what is haram, what is halal, what is good, what is evil, etc., etc. However, as you said again correctly, and I'm very impressed here, most people think of themselves as evolved space monkeys. They think of themselves as a flesh suit. They think of themselves as a body that will die, that will decay. And when the lights go off, there is nothing. There is darkness. Everything is pitch black. Nothing has a purpose. Nothing has a reason. Nothing has value. But the real question behind this is, of course, how can you live your life like that? I always say, if the lights go off, if you truly do not believe in an afterlife, why live in the first place? Because it doesn't matter how long you live. Think about it logically. If you would live one day and then you die, 
you wouldn't remember that one day because after death there's nothing. That is the atheistic claim. So if you live a thousand years even, who cares? Because once the lights go off, you do not remember anything. Yet again, there is no consciousness that perceives anything. And this is of course an ideology of despair and this leads to nihilism. The point of the story is nobody truly believes it. This is why everybody fears for their life. So if an atheist gets into a life and death situation, even the atheist will pray to something, will hope for something, will wish for something in order to stay alive. Then in that moment they will realize that they love their life. But why would you even love your life if the life has no purpose whatsoever? That is the true question here. And my point is that no atheist is a true atheist. And I talked with atheists. I told them, if you're really an atheist, why do you even care about your family? Just kill them all. Go out, commit murder, adultery, whatever. Do whatever you want, truly, and go out with a bang. But you see that society does not do that even though they are atheistic. Why is that? So you could have created a beautiful loving family with that would have gone on to last for decades and centuries. She's now just a girl that you would meet outside of a nightclub because why would you want to reproduce? Why would you want a family? There's no higher power. There's no one judging you. You might as well just lie to her, sleep with her and never see her again. Exactly. And I think the, the fruits of that, that, that rotten tree, this rotten idea that we come from nothing, I started to realize that the fruits of that were poisonous. I looked around me and I realized pornography is completely legal in the West. <laughs> And I'm not signing off on that. I'm not signing off on the fact that a young boy when he's 9 or 10 years old can get access to internet pornography even if he's not looking for it and be enslaved until he can beat it when he's 25 or 30. Exactly. I'm not signing off on the fact that OnlyFans is now the fourth biggest career choice for women in the West. The same woman who would have gone on to be community I like this guy, would have gone on to be mothers and wives and great people are now deciding that they want to sell their body online for fiat currency. I then realized, as, long as, as well as I was saying with the fiat currency, I realized that our entire financial system <laughs> is based on RIBA. The entire Reba. financial system and the whole world. Absolutely, and the question is, of course, who runs this financial system? We cannot say this here on YouTube. Now, is based on RIBA and debt, on fiat currency. And I thought, oh, all of my friends no longer want to speak to me because all they want to Good. do is go to a nightclub and drink and try and hedonistically fornicate with women. All the women that would have gone on to be my wives are now enslaved by this attention hookup culture. I can't buy a house because the house market has inflated because of Reba and you. Inshallah, you will. I just want to say one more thing about the pornography here. There yet again, you are correct, because pornography itself is so extremely unnatural, because we have to see everything through human nature. If you look into the mega cities nowadays, this is extremely unnatural, and this is why people feel anxiety. This is not the tribal setting that people used to live in. And therefore, let's depict a little scenario. You're living in a village. In that village, you don't have a TV, you don't have internet, nothing. When would you ever see other humans having sex? Let's assume it happens. You open up the door of your neighbors. You want to play with Billy and there you see his parents having s You would see that picture maybe for a second, shut the door and run away. This is what you could have seen potentially within a village setting. Or now let's extrapolate that idea. Maybe somebody has an open window and you sneak over and you see those people having sex. This would be perverted, of course. You would be an absolute perf. Imagine yourself looking through that window, peeking through and then masturbating to this. This would be disgusting and if the other villagers would find out about this, you would be executed probably. Do you understand? So in any instance, there would be absolutely no chance for you to truly see two people having s especially not like it is displayed in pornography. It is so extremely disgusting. It makes me puke and very, very sad nowadays. Nowadays, in my 30s, I see it very differently, similar the way that he describes it here. Those women are daughters of someone and those men are sons of someone, right? And now they're having sex on camera and it's not enough that they're having sex on camera. No, of course not. Let's take the camera and let's zoom into their genitals. Let's make a close up and the world has to see exactly this and all kinds of other filthy degenerate acts, right? This is normality nowadays. And I felt like I was screaming, screaming in a, a vacuum for a while. I couldn't understand how nobody cared. I couldn't yeah, they understand don't. They're how not guided. The men of the West couldn't look at the fact that their daughters are being geared up to sell themselves online. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't understand the fact that 
your children will never be able to have a family ever and will be in debt until they can pay it off when they're 90 and no one cared. I started looking into who did care, what countries, and this is after I discovered that the whole atheism thing was just a trademark of the science to get you to feel to get you to feel like you're worthless, to get you to feel like you have no power, to get you to feel like there's no reason for doing Empty. good. You might as well snake everybody. You might as well use people because there's no one watching over you. There's no higher power. That guy who you're crammed in a cubicle with trying to beat to then sleep with an, sleep with a woman, he's not your brother. You don't have the same father up in heaven. And I started to realize that was a lie. And once I discovered that there was a God, I started to look around me and question who are the people that are opposing this and since a young age i've been hit very hard with the anti-islam propaganda and i started to, to connect the dots the only countries in the world i could find where pornography was illegal was in muslim countries the only yep. countries i could find in the world where riba and fiat currency were illegal were in muslim countries the only place i could find in the world where you weren't Not pushed this atheism, nihilistic you're worthless idea that we come from nothing was Muslim countries. And I started to realize that the enemy of my enemy was in fact my friend. The same people who want to send me to war, put me in debt and turn my wife into a prostitute, they were the same people that were telling me Islam was bad. And then I realized that the whole exactly. Muslim propaganda Those people. that we've been fed in the West was a trick. And it was to go get, it was to get us to go to war and pick up a gun and shoot our fellow brothers under Allah for banks because Muslims would not take sodomy, they would not take pornography, they would not take usury and riba. And I realized that's all the Afghanistan war was, that's all the Iraq war was, this is all the, the American wars against Muslim countries was just because Muslims would not accept Haram. Long story short, I'm right, part brother. You of get a, a, a men's network from a certain man that I think 90% of the audience will know who he is. He's arguably the most famous man on the planet at the moment. Recently, six months ago, I'd say, reverted to Islam. I think you can guess who I'm talking about. We would have meetups in person. And ironically, yeah, I guess that's from the get go. I was a part of. It's quite an expensive one. It wasn't cheap to join. And it's like a, um, where businessmen come together and exchange ideas. And I started to realize that when we'd meet up, all the successful men in Scotland were Muslim. And I asked myself, why is that? And it's because they follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They don't take they don't take fornication, they don't take usury, they don't take pornography, and so they excel. I began talking to them regarding my, my fears. I, I feel like I have a fire inside of me and I can't, maybe it's a heavy conscience, but I can't accept the fact that when I have sons, they will try to enslave him with his passions and they will try to sell my daughters. And the only people that would really give me an explanation and a solution. I really have to say it's mind-blowing listening to you, man. A 21-year-old thinking already about his daughters, about his sons. In this generation, I did not expect this. Were the Muslims that were it's around amazing. me. And in, in return, I bought a Quran. I started reading. And I'll point out, in fact, that the Quran wasn't the first, first sorry, religious text I started reading. Initially, and I think it's just because of my ethnic background, being a white male in Scotland, in Europe, I was initially drawn towards Christianity. And I started to look at modern day Christianity and I started to realize it had nothing to do with the teachings of Christ. It's a churchy and institute nowadays where they push things like the Trinity, which I made a video on the Trinity on my channel, which became semi-viral as well. And I spoke about what that does to a child's mind. When you make Jesus God, you're bringing idol worship. When you make Jesus God, and say he was crucified, what you're then doing is, is that you're saying no matter how closely you follow God's teachings, men who are haram and men who are sinful will still have the power over you to kill you. And in a young child's mind, why would he want to follow the laws? Why would he want to follow God's teachings if men who don't could still have power over you? I looked at the modern day church institutes and the hypocrisy of call no man father, yet when you go into a Catholic yeah. church, you call the priest father. Be fruitful and multiply, yet yep. the, the priests and church can't have children. As well as a few others, the kingdom of God is within you, Jesus said, or Yahweh, as he was known as. Yet, you're told when you go into a church that that's the one special church, and if you don't go there, you, you're not going to heaven. I looked at the New Testament, which was written by a guy who claimed to have met Jesus after he said he was never coming <laughs> back with no witnesses at all, who completely rewrote the Bible. 
and it made it in essence modern day Satanism. Jesus saved you for your sins, then rise and sin no more. All these Christians I spoke to forgot the last part about rise and sin no more. And the whole idea was, I can do whatever I want, I yep. can condemn who I want, because Jesus has died for my sins. And in my opinion, that's no They are more over, they can eat pork as well. ...different than Satanism. You'll also know them by their fruits. And like I said, in Christian countries, in Christian countries, porn's completely legal. The entire financial system is based on usury. The music that is being fed to children. To be fair here, they're not Christian countries any longer. Secularism separated the church from the state. Therefore, they're simply liberal countries. And lead them down a straight run path. by You'll you know, know them who. by their fruits. And I started to look at what countries do not allow this. Muslim countries backed by Sharia law. Yeah. And I didn't give up on Christianity easily. I started reading all the banned books from the Bible. And then I decided the amount of translations that there's been, the amount of kings have rewritten the Bible. Kings who are not prophets rewrote the Bible to suit their agenda. Does that problem occur with the Quran? I noticed it didn't. One translation, one book given by Allah. Fast forward two weeks after reading the Quran, I swiftly got my Shahada done. And ironically, my Shahada is up on my YouTube. Um, I recommend you go watch it. I had a lot of comments in the video saying that it made them cry. So it's a great watch. It's a great watch. We went into the mosque. And might I point out, as I said about the Christian church thing, about how there's only one true church and Orthodoxy, Catholic, all this stuff. I can go to any mosque I want. Yeah, I come from an Orthodox Christian background and therefore we as well said that only the Orthodox Church is the real church. Be treated exactly the same and I will treat my brothers exactly the same, regardless whether it's in America, Scotland, Pakistan, Dubai, anywhere. But we were in Dundee Central Mosque in Scotland, if anyone's familiar with where that is, uh, that's where I was. We went in, it was for Juma, and after Juma was over, I was asked to come forward and I gave my Shahada and I did it in front of... 80, 90 brothers, and every single one of them. They didn't have to stay, they weren't asked to, but while I was doing my Shahada, every single one of them stayed and watched. And when I was done, every single one of them came up to me. They comforted me, they said, welcome brother. They gave me their phone numbers, wanted me to come meet their family. It was a real brotherhood. Well, my next few steps now- A real connection, I'm taking sure. it slow. I'm starting off by, well, not really. I, I go at everything 100 miles an hour. But to accommodate that and <laughs> I want stop to say me that. going overboard. Didn't seem slow. For the first or next two months, I'm just sticking with the Sunnah and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad and the five Salah prayers during the day. Sure. I want the, the five prayers to be habitualized. There is, sometimes I do forget. Maghrib, I'll, for, I'll forget sometimes just because I'll get into the flow of going to work. Hmm. Uh, Asr sometimes I might forget it, but it's just because it's not a habit yet. But I'm getting there. I'm on a, I'm, I'm on a, a nine day streak now with getting them. And then the other part of that is learning the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I think he is the example, along with Christ, along with Yahweh, but the Prophet Muhammad uh, and, and Christ are examples. Yahweh, but the, Yahweh is God. Given right? the, the word of God to show us how we should behave. And I, I want to get as close to that as I possibly can because in the future, I w in the future, and I know this might seem overly ambitious, but I, I would like to see a Sharia form of law in the UK and in the West because Masha. I'm not going to tolerate um, all the degeneracy that my brothers, my sisters, my parents, my future sons and daughters, my future wife or wife really will impressed, undergo. Mashallah, it has been willed and I feel fantastic. I have the greatest asset a young man could want. And I think I, I think Alhamdulillah. whether I came to Allah or he called me, it's came at such a great time. Being so young, I'm only 21 and I can really bear some amazing fruits. <laughs> um, so if you've enjoyed this video, if you sat through the whole thing, I've kind of mumbled up my words a bit because I'm out in the cold, I'm a bit chilly and I've, I've recorded a a video today so if you liked what i had to say and you want to see more of what i've got to do uh, got to say sorry the brothers will leave my my youtube my instagram my telegram i will do so, so too as i said i would advise you come over quickly because i've started to speak a lot about sharia law a lot about the reasons why i chose islam and i'm already getting attacked by the matrix i hope to see you again thank you for watching this Ali akbar allahu akbar
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Yet again, I have to say I'm extremely impressed with this young man. Moreover, I'm happy, I'm glad to hear that we have people like him in this generation having this thought process at all. Because when I was at his stage in life, I didn't think about subjective morality, objective morality, morality in general. God, why would I care? I went out partying. I was not guided whatsoever. He, alhamdulillah, is guided by Allah. And I I see great things for him, inshallah, if he continues down this path. I'm going to link his channel in the description box. And moreover, if you're watching, I would like to invite you here on this channel for a live stream where we can discuss your path towards Islam and beyond. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, make God bless you all. Much love and peace.